essence within the data and just skip all, pa all patients or all controls that do have missing data. Of course, that's a problem because the sample size decreases and uh, last time I had a, a study when only 10% of all uh, people uh, had complete data. So that could be a really big problem if you just skip all of them. So an alternative method uh, used and the method we are talking about today is last observation carry forward. That means that if we do have missing data, we are replacing them by the last observed measurement. Again, we do have our data set and we do have missing data. And what we do is we fill in the last observed measurement. You can see patient 1 at time point 1, 181 and so on because these data were missing and we just fill these data in. So that's what's called last observation carry forward. Where's the problem? What does this do if we change our data that way we did it? So we have to think about the process that lies behind the missings because there is a, a process that lies behind and uh, there are three types of non-response processes and uh, we follow the terminology of Little and Rubin. These three types are missing completely at random, or called MCAR data, missing at random, MA, and missing not at random. And it's necessary uh, that you know what it means if you're talking about MCAR data or if you're talking about MAR data. So let's start with missing completely at random data. That means that the probability of a missing is independent of unobserved and observed data. So it really doesn't depend on anything. It's just an accident that your data are missing. For example, if there uh, are lost documentations or if somebody broke his leg and, and uh, wasn't able to uh, come to the second visit or whatever. You know, but it must not be uh, um, dependent on the thing we are, the value we are measuring. So if you look at our data here, we do have uh, completely at random, missing completely at random. There's nothing behind. We can see it's not the age, it's not the sex, it's not uh, either it's the in intervention group or the controls. Yeah? They're just missing. We don't know why and there are no reasons for this. On the other hand, we do have missing at random. Missing at random means that there are uh, missings that depend on something, but only on data that we do have observed. So we don't have any unobserved data that influence the missing process. An example, if we do have higher missing rates for patients with baseline uh, systolic blood pressure above 184. So as you can see in our example, at the baseline measurement, here you have 185 and we do have missings. 187 and we do have missings and so on. But measures that uh, lie under 184, there are no missings. So well, that's called missing at random. That is sometimes uh, a little bit mixed up with missing completely at random, but it's necessary that you know the difference between these two missing processes. Finally, we do have missing not at random. The problem, if you do have data missing not at random, is that the missing depend or the probability of, of missing data depend on the observed uh, variable itself or on unobserved variables. So, an example. For example, we do have patients with a systolic blood pressure above uh, 165 at the final exam. 
and exactly these patients uh, won't come at the final exam. How would that look like in our data? So we have our data set again and I marked all the uh, patients and all the measurements above 165 on the third uh, time point and missing not at random means that these measurements miss. So we can't, we can't uh, predict them because we do not know these measurements. There's a process is clear if you don't know it, but here we couldn't see it that it's above 165. So we don't know this, and that's a problem. That's a big problem. So we do have uh, two types of missing processes which are relatively um, easy to to um, compensate, but that one is really a bad thing. And there are really complex models that can deal with that, but the simple, simple models do have big problems. So, okay, so we have, no, that's not the, the right, okay. So, now uh, Mr. Yanagida will take over and uh, show you some data uh, and some simulations and he will show you the impact of uh, last observation carry forward if you use the last observation carry forward method in your data and what uh, and how this will affect your his the data and the results thank you Michael. so next i'd like to present uh, another example so let's assume we have a data set with 50 patients in the control group as you can see here and 50 another patient in the treatment group randomly assigned so it's basically the same example like before and we measured systolic blood pressure on three time points time point one two and three so this is the case uh, when there is no missing and the analysis indicates that um, to decrease in systolic blood pressure is uh, a greater in the treatment group than in the control group and the analysis you would conduct on such a data set would be a repeated measure ANOVA with including a between subject factor and the interaction term group uh, times time is significant on 5% alpha value so there is an interaction effect going on as you can clearly see in in the graphics here. Okay, next um, let's see what happens if we have uh, missing completely at random. So that's the case here. I put some missings in the data on time point two and time point three and as you can see um, on time point two I put in about uh, 20 24% missings in the control group and 16% in the treatment group and 36% um, and on time point 3 are missing in the control group and 24% are missing in the treatment group. So this, it, the data looks like this. And the missing values are not dependent on anything observed. So this is why it's called missing completely at random. Let's conduct the analysis again, but first we apply the last observation carried forward method. So as you can see at the first observation it was missing, that's why it is highlighted yellow and the value observed at time point one is carried forward to time point two and also carried forward to time point three because this patient was obviously a dropout patient. So, in this case, um, the repeated measure ANOVA is significant, so the result is basically the same. There is an interaction effect, uh, meaning that um, the treatment group is obviously better working than the control group, but um, as you can see, uh, there is a bias included 
because uh, the mean difference, the actual mean difference between the control and treatment group on time point 2 is minus 2.9, but this mean difference is underestimated using the last observation carried forward method and also underestimated um, at time point 3. So this is the graphs for that case. So the bias here is uh, 1.72 at time point 2 and 0 0.38 at time point 3. So in this case, it's well, the results are biased and uh, maybe it's true that uh, the results are more conservative, so the effect is underestimated, so in some cases this is not, not a big problem like um, overestimation of an effect, but let's take a look at the missing at random case. And in this case, um, the missing process is dependent on the group variable meaning that there are much more missings in the control group than in the treatment group. For what, what reasons? And uh, so there are 32 percent missings in the control group while only 8 percent is missing at time point 2 in the treatment group. At time point 3 there are 44 percent in the control group and 16 percent in the treatment group. So this is the case of missing at random because the missing process is dependent on the group variable in this case. So, what happens to the results applying the last observation carried forward? Um, so, the repeated measure ANOVA interaction is significant, but the effect is much higher than in the complete case scenario. Actually, um, the effect is overestimated, meaning the actual effect at time point 2 is uh, minus 2.9, but applying last observation carried forward method, the effect uh, is minus 3.5. And the effect is uh, also greater at time point 3, the actual effect is minus 6, but applying this method it's minus 8.2, and that's what you clearly see at this graphics. Because to process is dependent on the control, on the group variable. The same case is missing not at random. In this example, the missing process is dependent on the uh, missing values itself, meaning that higher values have also a higher probability for being missing. Also, um, repeated measure ANOVA in this case is significant, but um, yeah, the, the bias is also present, but not as big as in the missing at random case, um, but it indicates that this method, um, yeah, it's, it's, it's not really working in this case. So, this was an example of what happens if you apply last observation carried forward uh, in case of missing completely at random, missing at random, and missing not at random, but it was just only one data set. So what we did next is um, conducted a, we conducted a simulation study. So we um, applied a thousand runs over the same data set, and it's, um, we at each run we deleted, deleted about 20 percent at time point two and 30 percent at time point three, and the result is actually the same. Like, in, uh, like shown in the one data set before. So there's a clear bias here, so the effect um, is clearly underestimated in case of missing completely at random. Next scenario, missing at random, so the missing process is also dependent on the group membership, meaning that uh, the missing, there are 80% missing in the control group, group but only 20% in the treatment group and in this case the same result, the effects are overestimated. So, last scenario, um, the higher values have also higher probability for missing and it's not as bad as in the case of missing at random but there's also a bias the results. So, um, what can we do about this problem? So, there are two 
methods which are um, recommended for missing data. Um, these two methods are full information maximum likelihood and multiple imputation. Just a quick peek at the results in case of using multiple imputation. So these are the same simulated data sets and it indicates that if we apply multiple imputation instead of last observation carried forward, there is nearly no bias here in case of missing completely at random. And in the case of missing at random, the method multiple imputation works nearly as well as in the case of missing completely at random. That's because the method multiple imputation is um, suited for missing completely at random and missing at random as well. But um, in the case of missing not at random, multiple imputation also has a bias because this method is not applicable in case of missing not at random. And in case of missing not at random, you need other methods suited for this special missing data process. Okay, uh, Mr. Weber will give a short summary. Okay, thank you, Jakuya. So, what have you learned? Last observation carry forward method is based on strong assumptions, and we assume that uh, missing data do not change over time. This assumption is not addressed in any of the discussed missing processes before. That means that we do not know whether this assumption holds or not. Therefore, if this strong assumption of not changing uh, when data are, data are missing, uh, the last observation carry forward method will give you highly biased uh, results and this bias is unpredictable. That means uh, the effect may be as well over as underestimated. Of course we only showed you one example and we only showed you that the effect was under or overestimated but in general you can say you do not know whether the effect will be over or underestimated. In the case of missing completely at random, the complete case analysis is valid. Uh, therefore, the uh, complete case analysis is better in that case than the last observation carry forward method. Of course, there is a decreased statistical power. Okay, and here are some references and if there are any questions, please feel free to ask. Thanks.